The Goose Decoy, a classic toy of childhood. Well, maybe only my childhood, but I also used fishing lures as action figures, so I might be crazy. However, there's a way to make a Goose Decoy even more exciting. Just add steam power. This is one of those projects that I've been hoarding for a while that I started building years ago and never got around to finishing. So this little project was supposed to be a working steam-powered riverboat model with some remote control stuff in it and this little steam engine which originally was some kind of tractor but tractors are boring and boats are cool so I threw away all the wheels and other garbage and made it into a boat engine. Uh, this servo was going to be for steering, that's the receiver, and then I had these little wooden gears that ran off of the tractor gear and spun the paddle wheel. And I did actually have this working. If I can find a video of me testing it, I will cut to that now. So my ADHD kicked in and I realized that I'll probably never finish the superstructure or make this into an actual steamboat. So what if I try to make it into a steam goose instead? We just got to figure out how to get the steam engine and the paddle wheel into the goose decoy and rig up the controls so I can steer it and control that little gear shift mechanism. Looks like my high class power distribution mechanism is broken here. I also wanted to give a shout out to the Redneck Engineering and Tinkering page on Facebook. It's a great spot to see other do-it-yourself and weird homemade projects that other people have been working on and share your own projects. So if you're on Facebook, go ahead and check it out. This is remarkably poorly designed. There's not really anywhere to replace batteries, so it looks like somebody's uh, hacked on a 9 volt after the fact. For the record, I didn't do this modification. I found this thing like this. Um, I don't even remember where I found it. Probably on the side of the road somewhere. Well, you got nothing. Alright, well I've given this piece of garbage my best tries, and nothing I do can make it work, so... I'm just going to strip this down for parts. There's a couple things in here I could use for other projects. You know, this was supposed to be a video about building a steam goose. And instead it's becoming a video about tearing apart old RC stuff that doesn't work. This little boat works, although it's pretty slow. So I might have to see if I can pull some parts out of this. I also have this boat that's a little fancier, and I've never actually tested this one. So I might see if this works first. If it works and it's faster than the other boat, I might just keep it. But we'll see what I can get out of these parts. Alrighty, so I pirated some electronics out of one of those other RC boats. And now I should have some working servos. We got throttle, and we got steering. So we gotta hack that steamboat into the goose. And then we got to hack these electronics into the steamboat to control forward, reverse, and steering. So I have a couple things to solve now. I need to be able to get this little fuel canister in there, or at least refill it while it's in there. And then I need to get water into the boiler. Now normally the water goes in here. I think I'm going to remove this little steam whistle, since it's kind of seized up anyway. And I'm going to add a water fill valve here. So theoretically, when this flywheel spins, it's going to drive my gear system and then my paddle wheel. So I've dumped some acetone in this little fuel canister, which is full of cotton. I've also dumped some water in 
to my new fill valve, which used to be the whistle. So let's go ahead and fire it up and see if I burn down the goose. Warp speed! All right, we are now, now slightly on fire. All right, we have run out of fuel, but that seems to have been a successful initial goose test. Now I just need to mount this engine a little more securely, uh, less rubber band and more something else, and then get those servos in there. Now I'm gonna do some of those bulkheads to keep this all semi-waterproof. Okay, my phone decided it was not going to work properly, so I've probably lost some of the video of making this. But we're basically done now. We've given it a little top hat, because anything involving steam needs to have a top hat. And now we're going to see if this floats, and if it is approved by a real goose. I think they hated it. And it floats, maybe. Nope, nope, it doesn't float. Okay, we seem to have a slight design flaw. I was hoping that my bulkheads were enough to keep this dry, but this stuff weighs a lot more than I expected in regards to the flotation of the goose. So I need to improve these bulkheads a little bit. And yes, I realize everything in here is made out of hot glue and balsa wood, and I'm putting hot glue and balsa wood right next to fire. However, uh, when you saw this flare up before, it was because the paddle wheel was kind of fanning the flames. So this bulkhead not only serves as waterproofing, if and when it works, it also keeps that air blast from fanning the flames in my firebox, which hopefully means it won't flare up again and catch the whole thing on fire. Oh. <sighs> All right, so we're kind of back to square one on this steam goose, and I had a couple problems, mostly relating to that balsa wood hull. Uh, the first one was that the balsa wood, when it's not painted, it just kind of soaks up the water and falls apart, and I had forgotten that. I had painted my paddle wheel, so it actually held together, but uh, the rest of that stuff just fell apart and all the hot glue in the world couldn't make this waterproof. Now the other problem was my gearing system, or belt drive, and this thing spins so fast that I can't just directly belt it, or there will be no torque to run that paddle wheel in the water. I need to go from this to a bigger gear or wheel, and then from that to the paddle wheel, so I'm going to have to poke around at that a little more and see what happens. All right, this is turning into garbage again, so I'm gonna rip all this out yet again and try something else. Well, that's not good. Let's test this in the water. And they hate it. Is this gearing enough to push this paddle wheel 
through water or is it just going to sit there? So, let's do something a little different. I'm going to stop trying to do a stern wheeler because I have not gotten that to work with the gear linkage and the waterproofing and the fireproofing. So let's do a side wheeler instead. That way I can try to make the entire drive train just connected to the engine and then set that into the goose and not have to worry about having a bunch of holes in the hull and not have to worry too much about the drive train because it will hopefully be a little more self-contained and bolt it onto a little stronger structure of the engine versus that wiggly plastic of the goose body. All right, so this is version two, maybe three. I don't even remember anymore. This is version, another version of the Steam Goose. Now with side paddle wheels. And we've gone back to the terrible wooden pulleys and rubber bands as a drivetrain system because that seems to work a little better or at least better than I can make with these actual gears. So, we need to fire this up, preferably outside the goose to start with, see if the drivetrain works, see if it all catches on fire, and then put it back in the goose, see if it propels the goose along, and see if everything sinks again. Okay, Steam Goose Side Wheeler Edition is working a little better. I just need to balance it out more so that it doesn't just spin in circles and I can actually get some controls with my RC stuff. So we're going to play around with that a little more. Uh, I might just add some weight inside the goose body to balance it a little better and then we'll try it again. Alright, we're going to preheat a little bit. Well, there we go. Steam Goose version 3 works pretty well. And ironically enough, I had to go back to wooden pulleys and rubber bands for my power system. And that worked way better than actual gears because I am not precise enough to put actual gears together, apparently. 
So, this has been a fun but stupid project, as are many of them. And I think it's time to put it away, because I'm kind of bored with it. And I've burned myself several times. Almost burned down the goose several times. Uh, I have sank several times. Fortunately, not in the fish pond, because it'd be hard to get it back from the deep spot in there. But I've got it all sealed up. I've got it working. And maybe in a little while we'll take it out to a larger pond or something. But for now, I think that's the end of this video. So once again, thank you for watching, and make sure to like and subscribe if you want to see more stuff like this, and we'll see you next time.